Welcome to yet another episode of the Economic Times Cutting Chai Stories, a series of conversations with CXOs and business leaders over chai or coffee, if that's your preference, brought to you by ETH. The urgency and pressure on business leaders as they navigate the COVID-19 pandemic has been immense, to say the least. These business leaders have been constantly monitoring myriad ways to ensure that their respective companies stay on course in the new normal. The incredible demands placed on them makes us often wonder how they have time for family, hobbies, or any downtime at a personal level. And let's not forget that they are mere mortals. This initiative by ETH is aimed to create a deeper connection with them and to get a sense of what business leaders of several prominent companies do when they're not in business mode. Today, it's an absolute pleasure to host Sunil Thakur, Country Director, BMC Software. Sunil, welcome to the Economic Times Cutting Chai Stories. Ivan, that was a crisp of a introduction. Wonderful, man. It'll be a pleasure talking to you. Same here. I'm really looking forward to the next 20 minutes, uh, Sunil. Okay. Uh, I don't think people ask about the well-being of leaders that much. You know, People ask the leaders as to how they're taking care of their teams. What are you doing in a work from home scenario? You know, things are changing. Things are dynamic. How are you motivating them? So my first question to you is, how have you been over the past 18 months? And what does a day in your life currently look like? I mean, can't complain much. I would say, you know, just that the days have become busier with many more meetings. Uh, probably it takes a little longer to explain the same point. And of course, uh, you know, the big change is that I attend my office in jumpers or T-shirts. And I sometimes also double up as a doorman in between <laughs> meetings, right? So, but funny, you know, that everyone understands all these things and accepts these interruptions and this informal dressing. So obviously I can't complain much. It's been okay for now. Okay. So, so no complaints. Yeah, I, you, you typical... Uh, you know, stoic leader, everything is fine. Everything is good. I, I love the attitude. Wonderful. Okay, Sunil. Uh, for us, the second wave has tapered. Uh, there is a looming third wave, but fingers crossed it doesn't hit us. So has the work from home dynamic changed as compared to when we went into lockdown in March 2020? Mm -hmm. And if yes, how? Yeah, you know, Ivan, uh, there was a difference in both these phases. Now, phase one was sudden, and it was about a complete countrywide lockdown, while phase two was more of a localized phenomenon. And also, if you go, uh, by and large, the activities remain muted for about three to four weeks, unlike a much longer period in phase one. And I think, as a society, we had learned to deal with this wave. And to me, and to so many of us, it wasn't an unknown enemy anymore. We knew if we wear masks, if we maintain distance or we stayed away, this is all going to come down. So for all, all I see is, you know, the second wave was much lesser disruption. Right. But I, I, I saw another good thing, right, that changed. And I, this is how people got adjusted. So I saw a lot more investments in making our home office more comfortable. For example, some of my friends bought a height adjusting table. So they could stand up and work sometimes, right? The, but if you look at the big changes that were coming in, um, and I see it more now, uh, because it's been pretty long uh, that we've been working on long meetings and all that, people are beginning to say no to meetings. And in a way, you know, trying to gain control of the day, this had become so big because nobody knew how to react, right? So where whatever meeting were thrown at you, you were just picking them up and meetings after meetings, you were sitting inside on your chair. And if the other thing that also changed in the second wave is the protocol started to come in because this was no more an unknown enemy. So once the protocol right. set in, fully vaccinated people were, yes. were a great certificate to flaunt, right? And support activities and services around us, they all got a lot more organized than the first wave. Now, if you look at so many utilities or services that you need at home, they would just say that, you know, our staff are fully vaccinated. And that gives you a lot of comfort to use them, you know, and they come in and service you. So we were getting to near normal with all these things, all these protocols coming in. So that's the change that I saw between the first wave and the second wave. 
Yes, yes, very well articulated. I mean, I mean, thanks for for sharing that, and and that gives us an insight into into what challenges you had. And and yes, while while the the second wave in terms of personal loss when it came and and uh, uh, the number of lives it took was was completely it, it was harsh. Uh, what you're saying is, yeah, it was no when it came to work from home, it, it wasn't a, a first time. It wasn't a shock. So it was protocols tweaking, expectation set, and that's about it. Yeah, nice, nice. Let's try and evoke some nostalgia when it comes to you, Sunil. Let's rewind a little bit. In fact, rewind quite a bit. So if you were to go back to the early years of your childhood, uh, school or later college, uh, share some memories with us and also tell us if there was anybody who influenced you in those formative years. We've all had influences while we've grown up. Uh, we'd like to hear who yours were. And also, as a follower, uh, what ambitions did you have then as a young boy or teenager growing up? Many questions rolled into one. I'm sorry, Sunil, but I uh, had to package it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'll tell you, Ivan, um, uh, one of the changes that I didn't talk about, and I saw this, is uh, a lot of uh, people have moved to tier two, tier three cities, you know, where they come from, right? And uh, this was a great time to go back, get connected to your family, to your old friends, your childhood times. The amount of time people have spent in their childhood homes uh, they would have never imagined that, that they could have ever done in their lifetime uh, while they were professionally working. Um, so we all remain always very connected to our roots and that's what is etched in our memories. And there are always those fond and warm memories that, uh, you know, take you back and you feel good about it. And I think the, uh, the older you get, the more attached you start becoming to that and those things come to the fore. Uh, for me, uh, the biggest influence came from my dad. And uh, my dad always made us think big. He just wouldn't spare us. I mean, if for anyone to think small, I mean, anything that we were talking about, it's got to be large, big, and that's what we have to. So we were always looking at the horizon, things that were far and above. Everything that we had do to do had to have two criteria to fulfill. One is, will it make me go higher? And second one was, it should not be focused on anything which is immediate returns, over sustainability and growth. So these are two principles that he set in us, you know, in all, in all his kids uh, very early in our childhood. And he believed in the hard work to an extent that he named our first house Parishram. Now that's wow. a Hindi word. It says hard work, right? Yeah. But so for us, you know, uh, there are no absolutes in life and there are no givens, right? Everything is up for grab. So for us, the way of life was to think big, put in whatever it takes to succeed. So we had our own share of you know, hits and misses, but the horizon was always there in front of us to look at. Even today, when I run my organization, run my business and I motivate these young minds, this is a story that I always want to share with them. Never ever leave your eye away from that horizon. Keep looking at that long-term over short-term gains. And for me, I would rather choose a big aspiration and work on them than thinking small and remain contented on its small things. So that's what's been my ambition. Yes, yes, wonderful, wonderful. You know, it took me back to my my father, and, and you're absolutely right. It didn't matter what the means were, lower middle class, middle class, whatever it is, the ability of a parent to inspire you to think big and also concurrently live simple. Live simple. I see that in you, and I'm not saying this just for the sake of saying it to make you feel nice, but I can see that you're very grounded. You know, that <laughs> simple living hasn't gone anywhere. Yeah. Yeah. And, and that was just such beautiful, basic mantras, as we call it, which sometimes, you know, we, we take for granted because there's so much of management jargon and there's, it's such a fast life and X is there and there are workshops and, you know, the, but then at the end of the day, when you sit back, take a pause, take a deep breath, reflect, you realize that all those lessons came from our gurus, largely our parents or our teachers. And, and that's about it. So well said, Ivan. So well said. Thanks for sharing that because it really brought back memories. As you were talking, I was thinking of my dad and, and some <laughs> major influences. Absolute, you know, match. Absolute match. I couldn't have said it better. So wonderful. Okay. I think you answered a part of this when you talked about your dad. But let me ask you because you know it's been a long journey since then for you 
how has your family contributed to your success? And I'm sure, uh, you know, you, you'll shed some light on that. So that was in the early days and now. Um, so, of course, my dad helped me to think big and work hard. And, um, you know, then you get married, you have kids, and everybody needs your personal time and attention, right? Right. Uh, but here you are, you're trying to achieve those big goals. You're working hard. Yeah. I am a workaholic. I wouldn't deny that. I have work hard. And for many years, when I was building up my career, I did not take leave for a few years. I mean, no long leave as such. So mm. we could go the, oh, that occasional weekend getaways we really did, but there wasn't a long uh, you know, vacation that we all went as a family. Now, this is hard for the kids, hard for the wife. I mean, they had friends all around, you know, you were making those vacations and we couldn't, right? Because I just didn't have time. And every time we would near that vacation time, I would have something or you're coming up and you're, you know, I'll have to say, okay, we'll do it next time. But, you know, over a period of time, I did hear a few grumbles, but they never slowed me down. So by and large, I would say, I remained their purpose in life. And to be very true, they always remain the purpose of my life, right? And I, I, I can't tell you how indebted I feel for their support because I, when I look back at the sacrifices they made along with me to be where they are, it's really overwhelming, right? I think if it wasn't for my wife, I, today, you know, I, I would be working much, much longer, much harder. She, she nowadays, you know, she just puts her foot down and she gets me to stop, you know, take a break and relax nowadays. And she says, it's seven o'clock or 7.30, stop. I mean, you can't do it day on day. So it's a weekend, take it off. So, you know, what it does is it's a very strong belief that if you have to stay sharper and you have to have creative, you have to give yourself that break to think, to relax and come out because you're full of information these days. And I think as I experience those breaks, I think what she says makes sense. So in a way, I'll tell you, family, as you rightly said, Ivan, is the number one school for everyone. It's been for a lot of us in India. You're absolutely right. And this perspective was shared with me when I, when I decided to pursue my alternative passion. I worked in the corporate space for 19 years. Mm -hmm. And then it's another story. But somebody put this in perspective. Like you said, family is the school, which is fantastic. And, you know, when you ask those existential questions, that's why are you doing what you're doing? You know, where are you going in life? Mm -hmm. You realize whatever you're doing, there's a lot of noise that surrounds it. But the, mm -hmm. at the end of the day, you're doing it largely for yourself Absolutely. and for your family. And that's where it, it starts and ends largely. You know, it comes a full circle. And sure. once you hopefully have that wisdom, uh, which came late to me, it, it simplified my life. And I can see that what, what, what you were sharing helps simplify things because work never ends. Yeah. Work never ends. Sure. Jane, thanks. Thanks again for sharing that. You are young. <laughs> I can see it. I can see it. But what, what I'm going to ask you is what's the secret, uh, Sunil, where, you know, for you to stay young constantly, and you know, I'm, I'm using the word "young" as as a as a metaphor for for constantly reinventing yourself because the world is changing so rapidly, especially in technology and and everything else. Because we tend to hear of so many things, and and they, but you've got to keep yourself updated. You've got to reinvent. How how do you stay young, and and even on the on the physical side of it, and and the mental side. <laughs> Who does not want that eternal youth? I mean, I, I'm searching for that elixir as well, right? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but I'll tell you, for me, there are two parts to stay young. One is the mind and the other is the body. Okay. If you have a childlike curiosity and you continue to learn and get amazed by many things around you, as you were in the child, you will always feel young. Mm. And of course, the second part is your machine should support you, you know, in your youthfulness. So the diet, the exercise is so important. And India is a land of yoga and Ayurveda, right? The world is embarrassing all that. And these are such wonderful mechanics to maintain a good, healthy life. I think if you go back to our roots, it becomes so for me, uh, doing a little bit of yoga and pranayama every day, 
uh, I, and, and be a little bit careful with my diet. I don't know. I'm, I'm a little bit, I'm a foodie myself, so I can't yeah. always be careful, but, yeah. um, you know, as much as we can, I see that trend setting in, in a lot of people now and people are more careful with what they eat and, uh, you know, the exercise part of it. So, which is good. So that trend is catching up in India and, uh, yoga is catching up in a big way in India. Uh, my wife, my kids, I mean, they're regularly in yoga. So I think that's a great way to stay young. Wonderful. Wonderful. Oh, wow. I'm really enjoying this cutting chai conversation. And, and I, I really am. Uh, there are many more questions I'd like to ask you. But what I am going to do at this point in time is uh, move on to a different segment, uh, Sunil, with your permission. It's called the short answer segment, which is a one word, one line answer. I'll, I'll pose a series of questions to you. Uh, no rapid fire. This is not a rapid fire. It might seem like one. Take your time, go for it. Uh, the idea is to get to know Sunil even better. Uh, somebody who, whom, whom our audience can see beyond the designation and job type. So it's going to be a fun round. There are no wrong answers in this segment because all the answers are your answers. And so they are obviously the right answers. Mm -hmm. So are you ready? I am ready. Yes, you Good. I'm enjoying the conversation Good. as well. Yeah, let's go for it. Let's go for it. That's the spirit. I love it. Okay. Uh, kindly choose one of the two options, uh, Sunil. Books or movies? Oh, books, of oh, sure, all the time. Books. Okay. City life or small town slash village life? Small town. Small okay. town. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, chocolate or pickle? You said chocolate and pickle or pickle? Yeah. Cho choose one. I, pickle? Cho chocolate. chocolate? Okay, chocolate. Okay. Sorry about that uh, for a lot of people, but <laughs> <laughs> I love chocolates. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, would you test the waters or dive into the deep end? Fun. Um, usually, I'm a lot more planned. So I would say, let me test waters first before I dive in. Fair enough. Like I said, all these answers are right answers, Neil, because they are your answers. Okay, So don't worry about it. Indian music or Western music? Oh, I'll go for Indian music. Okay. Uh, what do you prefer? Uh, logic or creativity? Ah, that's a tough one. See, both have their place. And uh, depending on the situation, each one works well, right? Yes. Uh, so actually, both are right. I mean, I would go with both. But if I have to, run, if I have to run with it, I would go with logic. Nice. Uh, do you prefer cooking or being cooked for? <laughs> uh, uh, I'm not a good cook, so I prefer being cooked for. Yeah, it's fair enough. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, Pani puri or save puri? Save puri. Okay. Choose one samosa pav or vada pav. Uh, oh, I will go with uh, samosa pav. You see, these are the tough ones, now. Nah, yeah, tough ones. Yeah. <laughs> these are the tough ones. So I'll give you another tough one. Kanda uh -huh. bhaji, kanda bhajiya, or uh -huh. batata bhaji? I would go with uh, batata bhajiya. Ah, wow. See, okay, good, <laughs> good. <laughs> and at what time? Actually, my, I'm, I have water in my mouth because this is the time for that chai and, you know, bhajiyas in the evening. Yeah, the moment we finish this interview, I'm going to get someone to cook that bhajiyas for me. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, good. Let's, let's see how you tackle the next one. School friends, college friends, or work friends? Kindly choose one. Oh, uh, I, I think I'm both have, all three have different flavors. Um, I'm, I'm pretty close to my college friends now. So, I have college friends okay. are number one. Yeah. Okay. That's fine. Great. Uh, since you talked about flavors, let me ask you as to which is your favorite ice cream flavor? Um, butterscotch. Ah, uh, lovely. Uh, describe your journey thus far in three words. Oh, it's been passion, it's been hard work, and it's been fun. Nice, nice. Uh, Sunil, your favorite holiday destination in India? And favorite holiday destination internationally? Uh, I, I, I'm most relaxed when I'm in Goa. So okay. that's the favorite destination in India. 
if I look at the international destination, I would like to go to some place in Germany. Nice. Favorite subject in school? Was in mathematics. Um, it wasn't, huh? No, it wasn't mathematics. Oh. I think uh, the chemistry? favorite uh, chemistry was good, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Most disliked subject in school. <laughs> no, 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 no. You're opening me up too much. So now I have a kid. Let, let, let me take a guess for you. Okay, let me take a guess for you. It could be one of the two. Either civics. Oh, you got it. You don't have to answer the second one. You got it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what fun. What fun. Oh, God. Uh, but it's amazing. This is what cutting chai conversations are about. So you know this. In yeah. the office, everyone is, you know, boardroom, tie, hello, sir. You know, uh, I can't say. But you go to that nearest tapri, And yeah. the minute then it's a great leveler. Like the pandemic has been a great leveler for everyone. Everyone is having that cutting chai, you know, whether you're in a tie or whether you're just in a normal shirt. And, and you're sharing things and saying, you know, kya hua? Ye batao, wo batao. So this is great fun. Okay. If you had a choice and you had these three options, but you have to choose one, mm -hmm. you had the ability to use life's rewind button, life's pause button, or life's fast forward button, which one would you choose? I'm looking forward to a lot of things in life. So I, fast, I mean, forward. fast forward means uh, fulfilling my aspirations uh, that I think I'm moving fast towards. Yes. That the button that I would choose. Okay, that's great. Uh, would you call a spade a spade? I think I know what the answer to this. Would you call a spade a spade or sugarcoat it a little? <laughs> <laughs> you, you want me to say the second one, right? I mean, uh, no, I, I, I because I, I, okay, yeah, I, I think you will probably say the second one. Let's see whether I'm right or not. You, you were right. You okay. know, I, I see for me what happens is one thing that I never forget in life is that you're always dealing with human beings in front of you. Yes. And everybody has emotions, biases, backgrounds, problems yes. around them, right? If you just be hard on the problems and soft on people, 90% of your life problems are going to be resolved. So right. for me, you know, calling spade a spade is just going to spur up a lot of things, right? You can say it in so many better words and, you know, Absolutely. get through that situation. Imagine you're talking to your brother, to your dad or someone. What would you do? You wouldn't. Yeah. You wouldn't call a spade a spade. Yeah. You would I mean, be very sensitive to those people because of the filial relationship. Absolutely. Don't want what to you're work. saying is, can you apply that in life as a general rule? Absolutely. Yeah. Oh, got it. Got it. Great. Great answer. Let me ask you, which three people living or dead or fictional, would you like to have a cutting chai conversation with where you're in my shoes and you have an opportunity to have a cutting chai conversation with three people, living, people who have passed away, fictional, whom would you choose? Um, um, not thought much of this, but I can just tell you. Uh, you have time, you have time. I, I, uh, I'm very, very, very fascinated with uh, Rabin Mark Tagore. And nice. uh, I would like to have a conversation with him. He's been a very interesting personality all his life. So, and he's achieved so much in life. Mm. Uh, a wonderful soul. I would like to have a meeting with him if, if possible. Yes. Two more. Go for it, even. Uh -huh. Oh, you want two more to be done? Yeah, oh. three people. So, you, one is Ravindranath Tagore. Who else? Two more. Uh, the other uh, personality that you know fascinates me is Einstein. Not just for the discovery that he's done, uh, but the way he approaches life or approaches problems. I hear a lot of those quotes from him. So I would not like to talk much about his scientific discovery, sure. but uh, that. And the third person I would like to have a cut which I was Stephen Hawking. Ah, uh, wow! What a what a selection! What a <laughs> what a blend and amalgam of Albert Einstein and Stephen Hawking. Goodness. Stephen Hawking, I mean, think about the struggles that this guy did and still kept positive and doing so much of discovery. 
amazing, amazing man. And his, his thoughts are, I mean, I think we'll take some more years to understand all that Stephen Hawking wrote and found out. Yeah. You know, that's where when we have all our faculties largely in place, we tend to take, you know, something like eyesight, something like a, like a walk, our legs, our muscles are granted. And no wonder somebody has said that some of the greatest discoveries or some of the greatest things that have happened in history have mm -hmm. come out of struggles. Absolutely. Of struggles. So, I mean, it's amazing okay. what you said about Stephen Hawking. Yeah. Uh, just the last few questions in this segment. Uh, it's more, more in the na nature. These, uh, these uh, questions that I'm going to throw to you are more in the nature of complete the sentence. Just two or three of them. Uh, this my, is my... My greatest desire for my children is, these are not tricky ones. Uh, oh, my great, it is dash, dash, dash. They should be happy. Very good, very good. Behind every great man, there is, here's oh, an opportunity, sorry. It's hard work, resilience. Um, you know, people around him who support him to be, it is, he's not the only one who succeeds, you know, there are a lot see. of people around him who make it, right? So, mm -hmm. Behind a great man, there are many people behind him. Absolutely. And of course, his own uh, passion, personality. Yes. Yes. Nice. I have a dream that, dash, dash, dash. That this world is, becomes a much better place to live in. That's my biggest dream. Wonderful. Wonderful. Uh, last question in this segment. It's in the nature of fill in the blanks. Life is incomplete without dash. Uh, this one, without, I would say, dreams, you know, Wonderful. Yeah, as long as you're dreaming, you're trying to do things, you know, life is open to challenges, you know, you, you want to get up every day and do something about it. So, Fantastic. dreams. Fantastic. Friends, that was Sunil Thakur, Country Director, BMC Software. I really had a great time having this cutting chai conversation with Sunil. Firstly, he's a great human being and that's what matters to me and I'm sure it matters to everyone watching this. Uh, he was very frank. He was very honest. And in that honesty, uh, there were a lot of light moments and we laughed. And, and that's, the, that's the objective is to have a good laugh sometimes because life sometimes, given the pandemic and all that we're going through can get a little stressful and tough. I can see the glint in his eyes uh, a, a lovely smile on his face and an excellent demeanor. And Sunil, with that, I would like to thank you and wish you, your family, and BMC Software the very best going forward. Fantastic. It was a phenomenal conversation, Ivan. And as much as you enjoyed, I enjoyed this conversation. Uh, the only thing that you've left me with is, you know, some bhajiyas and, <laughs> and see that I'm going to get done soon after this. It's wonderful. It's truly a pleasure, Ivan, and talking with you. And I wish you a safe and a happy times ahead. Thank you so much. Really grateful for that. Thank you so much.